Next up for my record predictions for SEC teams when it comes to college football is Florida. Now, I've done three videos so far, Alabama, Auburn, and Arkansas. Um, if you want to check out those videos and see how I have them doing, feel free to go do that. Um, you know, the whole thing that I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to go through every SEC team, all 16 of them, and predict their records for the 2024-25 season. Um, now, when College Football 25 comes out next month, um, we're about a month away now, just over a month. When that comes out, I'm going to do full season simulations for all of the teams and see how they're, you know, how they perform in the game, how that compares to my record predictions. So, um, yeah, that will carry us up to, um, pretty much college football season IRL. So, I look forward to that. It's going to be some, uh, some good content. I think I, uh, I can't wait for that game, bro. Um, but yeah, we have Florida now, who has the toughest schedule in the country, easily. I think Arkansas's was really tough, Arkansas's schedule was really tough, um, but man, nothing, whew, nothing beats Florida, bro. Oh man, just look at the end of the season. 16, Tennessee, 23, Kentucky, number one, Georgia, number four, Texas, obviously these rankings or just whatever. Um, number 12, LSU. 6, Ole Miss. Florida State, number 15. All these teams are going to be ranked. Um, most likely ranked when they play them. So, <laughs> that's, that's awful. I mean, they have every game versus a ranked team based on this schedule, besides three. <laughs> Bro. Whoever did this, they shafted Florida so bad. Um, but we have week one. Miami visits the Swamp. Mario Cristobal um, in year two with Miami. Billy Napier in year three with Florida. Now, there's this whole thing going on with Billy Napier um, off the field. He's being sued. Um by that freaking quarterback, bro. I can't even think of his name right now, but he's being sued. Jaden Rashada, um, who is now, funny enough, at Georgia. <sighs> so, how much of a distraction would that be? I don't know. Miami, I think, is going to be pretty good. I think Miami could be like a 9-3 and three team, maybe like on the verge of being a playoff team if they don't get in. Um, however, I think this is a really important game for Billy Napier. I think these first, uh, five games here are very, very important for Billy Napier in Florida, man. Before you get to this gauntlet of a schedule, you need to at least go about four and one right here, man. I think you need to. You don't want to be like... Three and two or two and three going into this stretch right here at the end of your schedule, the second half of your schedule, you do not want that. Um I do think Florida is going to start off with a W here in week one against Miami. At home, it's gonna be a three thirty game. Swamp's gonna be loud as hell. <laughs> Especially against Miami. I think uh that's a pretty safe pick. Um Sanford Florida will go ahead and get that W. Texas A&M visits the Swamp. They have a new head coach, uh, Mike Elko, Connor Wigman. You know, if he can stay healthy at quarterback, I think he'll be a really good quarterback. People have him in the Heisman conversation. I don't know about all that, but I think he's really good if he can stay healthy. Um, I think A&M's defense is going to be pretty good. I don't, you know, how their offense goes. We'll see under Mike Elko. Obviously, the Jimbo Fisher's offenses were never really that scary. Um, but I'm I'm sure they will be maybe a little bit better. Maybe not right away. I don't know. It, A&M's a mystery to me right now. I think Florida gets another win. You know, Graham Mertz, veteran quarterback. You got Lagway right behind him, um, who is probably also capable of getting some playing time. At some point in this season, if Mertz is not playing too well. Um, i seen the Florida Spring game, and they looked pretty pretty solid offensively, I thought. 
Um, I, I'm trying to remember them fully. I think their running backs were pretty good. Uh, defensive wise, defensively, I am, you know, I'm not too sure. You know, they lost Corey Raymond, who, you know, Florida's secondary was, you know, kind of struggling. At least when I watched them, they would they would struggle quite a bit. Um, so maybe they'll be improved there. Corey Raymond now back with my LSU Tigers, man. Um, so you know that that's that's a mystery to me how their defense is gonna look. Then they have to go to their first road trip at Mississippi State. Now Mississippi State, you know, I just mentioned Florida's defense. Mississippi State has a uh, Jeff Levy as their head coach, who is a really brilliant offensive mind. Uh, it's a noon game. The cowbells are gonna be out in full full strength. Uh, it's not a night game though. A night game is Starkville. Starkville will be kind of scary. Um, what do I want to do? You know, I think Mississippi State might pull one off here. Not gonna lie to you. You know, it's a very hot start. Oh, I think. Oh man, you know, I'm gonna go with an upset here. I'm gonna go Mississippi. Okay, I'm not. Le I'm not settling for that. Nope. I'm gonna go with Mississippi State to take a win there, man. Uh, a little bit of an upset going into a bye week. Coming out of the bye week, you get UCF at the Swamp. It's gonna be a night game. Man, I think that could be a really good game. I do I think that could be a really, really good game. I, you know, I think Florida's gonna prove some people wrong this year. Because a lot of people were expecting them to go, like, 5 and 7, you know, be ass. <laughs> uh, I don't think they're going to be ass. I, um, you know, if they go 8 and 4 or 7 and 5 with this schedule, that's pretty freaking good. Not going to lie to you. That is pretty good. Um, then after UCF, they go to Tennessee. Now, Florida beat Tennessee at home last year. Man, that would be a really good game, bro. Florida may be ranked at this point, too. That Mississippi State loss would hurt them. But they could be. Depending on how A&M and Miami turn out, I guess, UCF. So, Tennessee could be a night game. <sighs> I'm going to go with Tennessee in this one, bro. Um, Kentucky at home. I'm going to go with Florida. I'm gonna go with Florida. That's a homecoming game for Florida as well. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Florida, especially if that's a night game. Yeah. Um, Jacksonville neutral site game against Georgia. I'm gonna go with the dogs at Texas. Oh boy, noon kickoff. I can't do it, bro. I can't do it. Um, this <laughs> then it's LSU hosting LSU. At this point, this would probably be what Florida's five and four. This would probably be a three thirty kickoff, maybe depending on how good LSU is. I guess uh, what their record is. You know, I hope it's a night game. I do hope it's a night game, even though the swamp at night is way, way worse than a three thirty kickoff. Hmm. You know, Florida has not beaten LSU in, what, five years? I think, yeah, I think I think my boys get it done. That's not a biased answer, man. That's not a biased answer. I just think my boys get it done, bro. I like I like LSU's matchup against Florida uh, the last couple of years. You know, they've, they've performed pretty well against them. Um, you know, it, it's... I'm, I, Florida LSU, bro... It's a special game. <laughs> it's always a special game because it's always, you know, pretty competitive. It's always an interesting one. Uh, it's hardly ever a blowout. Um, you know, last year LSU won 52-35, to but that was not really a 17-point game. It was fairly close throughout the game. Um, <clears throat> it's just Jaden Daniels is an absolute menace. 
um, to defend. So, you know, it, it. I don't see that as really being a 17. It, w it was not a 17-point game like that. Uh, LSU-Florida is always close. And last time LSU went to Florida, uh, two years ago, man, what what did we jump out to? Like, was it like a twenty-one nothing lead or something like that? It was it was a big lead, and then Florida ended up battling back with Anthony Richardson. Um, but yeah, I do think LSU could pull this one off here. Um, then you get Ole Miss noon game. Oof, man, that's rough. Um. At this point, Ole Miss may or may not be competing for a playoff spot. And Florida is competing for a bowl spot. So Ole, or Florida could play spoiler right here. You know, I'm going to give Florida an upset. I'm going to give Florida an upset right here, man. And then you get a Florida State to take on uh, the Seminoles. Uh, time is to be determined. I'm going to give Florida a win. I think Florida finishes the season on a two-game winning streak right there. Two big wins over Ole Miss and Florida State. And I have Florida going 7-5. and five. You know, they start off pretty hot, drop a game to Mississippi State that they probably shouldn't lose. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Florida starts off 5-0. and oh. Um, at Tennessee is just such a hard game. I think they can beat Kentucky for sure. Um, no, I also wouldn't be surprised if Kentucky could win that game. Obviously, it's the SEC. Um, <clears throat> Georgia's a tough one. At Texas, a tough one. LSU, you know, Florida could, could pull it off. Um, you know, I think this will be their, their skid right here. If they can avoid this skid right here, I think they're going to be in pretty good shape. Because, man, Georgia at Texas and LSU back to back to back, then Ole Miss. Bro, it, it, if you can avoid just absolute disaster right here, it, in these last seven games, if you can go four and three, I think you're sitting pretty good. Or even three and four. Like I have them going. You're sitting pretty good, bro. You'd be 7-5. I think that, again, like I said at the beginning of the video, I think that would be a pretty good season, going 7-5 with this kind of schedule. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What do you think Florida will do this season? Um, I'm pretty confident in that. Uh, I would say the ceiling for Florida is probably... I would say their ceiling is 9-3. I would say the floor is <laughs> I would say the floor is four and eight, to be honest. You know, they could drop the Ole Miss game. I mean they could drop every game on their freaking schedule besides Samford. <laughs> they could drop that too. I would say their floor is four and eight. Their ceiling is nine and three. I have them at seven and five. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did please drop a like hit that subscribe button. And uh I'll catch y'all in the next one, man. Peace.